Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. All right, Corey, we are here. The 2024 Commodity Classic live. in Houston, Texas, live at the Suka booth. Not really live. I mean, we're recording live. Well, we're, we are <laughs> Then we will edit alive. all of the profanity out because this guest really likes to use the F word, I guess. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Maybe. No comment. Our CIA backgrounder told us this. Uh, that, that, so, just one guest today. Just one guest today. I mean, this is a weird show because it opens at 3 in the afternoon. On the first day. Yeah. Kind of just like a soft opening, kind of like eases everyone in. I like it. It's a uh-huh. good vibe. It is. Yeah. It is. And what a show that we have here. I mean, we're talking uh, one of the largest campuses out of all the shows we've been to. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're here at Suka, but our other booth is the largest commodity classic booth ever. All Breaking right. records. Well, we got a good guest today. Let's Are you it. ready for an introduction? Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Let me see if I can cue you up some music. Wait, wait, wait. It might work. <laughs> Can I just do this? Go for it. Today on the Farm for Fun show from the 2024 Commodity Classic at the Sukup booth, we meet up with a woman who's a friend of the podcast, a, a new friend of the podcast from the far south. This woman is a mover and shaker in the ag industry. She's a farm her, where she has grown over 50 different vegetable grains and cotton. She owns ag marketing co- an ag marketing company. She owns... And runs Ag Mag, the magazine, has a TV show called Ag on Wheels. Please welcome from dang near Mexico, dang Texas, near Mexico. Michelle Martin. Woo! What an intro. <laughs> I love it. I, I, you know, like I said, it's a soft opening. Uh, I stumbled over my words there because I have troubles reading. <laughs> so uh, welcome and thanks for being our first guest. We'll get into stride probably like on guest three or four. It'd be perfect. So thank well, you. Well, you for never doing forget that. your first. So That's I am right. honored to be your first guest at this show. So we got egg on wheels. We got egg Meg. We got Michelle Martin. Yes. So how do you introduce yourself? I mean, I think y'all did a pretty good job. I can't believe y'all have all this information that you know about me. It's kind of scary. Well, like I said, we've we've got people in high places, and it's very nice because I don't. I don't usually look at this, but Tanner, is it's his Bible, okay. right? You know, if he was here, he would have to. And Dave probably needs it, too, because he's not on socials that much. But So stage five stalker is basically <laughs> what we have going on here. Here's the deal. We don't do it anymore. Tanner hired someone to do this. I'm telling you. Well, they no. deserve a raise. They do. Her name's Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. She's actually Thank a you. college student and doesn't work for the CIA, so it's crazy how easy it is to find stuff out yeah. about someone, huh? It really is. Yeah. When we look back, like, when we're 50 years down the road, like, what's it going to look like? Because, like, if you run for president at that point, like, everything you ever did in life at college is going to be out there. I'm just glad social media just started when I was in college (laughs) because I'd be in a lot more trouble. We were in that sweet spot. We were. We got to live, you know, the old bonfires and college life and, you know, didn't have cell phones parents weren't checking in on us we could sneak out and they didn't have an air tag in our bag they or didn't something have like an that. air tag with yeah. you uh-huh so we're living the good life now we're living the good life now so what brings you here besides uh coming to the podcast well i've been coming to the commodity for about four years okay. and i think it's just such a great networking i guess opportunity really and yeah. i'm also here with acres tv where my show airs right how long have you been on acres about a year now about a year going on our second okay We've talked to Acres. We haven't yeah. quite committed. We've got the email and the contract. I don't know why we haven't done it. I, it's not because we don't want to be on there. It's we've got so much other stuff going on, and it's like one extra thing to do, and we just, we just need to do it. Preach. Preach. I got a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, you've got looks like a lot more going on than we do, so maybe I shouldn't complain. <laughs> no one would care if you did complain or right. listen. That's so true. Get over it. That's like I said earlier today. You know, what was that question? Like, oh, you asked me what I thought about. A land fund. Yeah. And I was like, what, what good is uh, complaining about it? What good is complaining about $4 corn? Nothing. We all got to no deal good. with it, right? So just be better and do better than the next person or, you know, be the top 10%. I think you nailed it. Yeah. I always say life's tough. Get a helmet. And if you're super sensitive, just wear bubble wrap. Right. <laughs> Get right. a helmet. Life's <laughs> tough. Get a helmet. You so, heard it here first. So let's, let's go all the way back. Uh, did you grow up on a farm? I did not. You did not. I did not. But grow yet up you're a mini California for 
agriculture, not California for paper straws. That's right. Agriculture-wise, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what did you do when you were growing up if you weren't an egg? So I actually went to college to become a marine biologist, and I got a D on uh, my final and a D in the class and realized that wasn't the what career. What class was that? Biology? Biology. Yeah. Really? And so I said, nope. Changed my major five times. So you wanted to save the dolphins, and then... I did. I loved swimming. I love dolphins. I still yeah, do. Uh-huh. Still do. But anyway, long story short, married a farmer, and husband works for Helena oh. Fertilizers, and kind of just fell in love with the farming world. That's not on our background check. I worked for whoa, Helena for, whoa, for a year. Whoa, whoa, yeah, I whoa. Take, I retract my statement <laughs> about the pay raise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I worked for them. Well, it was a co-role with a co-op in Helena, uh, focusing on proprietary products. So oh. out, of, out of Des Moines, Iowa. And it was really cool because that was my first job out of college. So it like, got me this diverse knowledge base. Very shallow, but very wide. You know, so. They're a good company. I yes. can't complain. Yep. Yep. So, so you, uh, y- you got into media and TV shows. Did you, had a, did you have a media background or did you go to college for anything there? You know, I changed my major five times in college, and yeah. so when I graduated, it was more so with a agriculture, agriculture leadership and development, and that's kind of the degree where my advisor said, okay, it's time to go, and I paid my way through college, so I was just living it up, decided to take victory lap after victory lap, <laughs> but uh, I had several jobs out of college, one which was at a news station, gotcha. and the hours were just so erratic. I was going in at noon and leaving at midnight and I was only getting paid seven twenty five an hour and I was running a teleprompter. Yeah. I was told I never had the look nor the voice to be on. You news. were told you had a face <laughs> for radio or you know, like yeah, that's what everyone much. tells us. Yeah, and so I quickly was grateful for that because I do not like mainstream media or the news. So I said, Hey, that worked out of my benefit. Then I went and sold mobile homes. Yes, very strange, I know. Uh, six days a week working. So what, what's a sales pitch for a, a mobile home? This one is You're double talking. wide? Like, like what? Like, like this nah, has got This eight, one's like eight six axles. foot longer. It can only go so wide. This one has a warranty of how long? Like, what, what's the sales pitch? Yeah, you know, I don't know because I never even sold anything oh at all. Oh, my goodness. You know, I realized it wasn't for me when I told the lady. I said, wow, are you buying this home because you're looking to start a family? When are you due? Oh, and no. she was not pregnant, Ooh. and uh, I quickly realized this is not. At least she didn't ask to feel her belly. Like, oh, yeah. can, I, can I? I can feel it kick. Personal I'm not, bubble I'm not, over I'm there. Not, I mean, that, <laughs> that does suck. Yeah. But at least it's a woman asking a woman. I'd feel like terrible if I was a guy saying that. Well, to make it even worse, I was only getting paid a hundred dollars a week because oh, it was strictly commission based, twelve hours, fourteen hour days, and I said, forget this. That's all we're getting paid here. Oh, that stinks for you, man. <laughs> I'm here free. What can I say? Uh, there we go. You're welcome. There we go. You get it on the backside. I know Acres is paying you big there, right? Yeah, and actually, they're not. Not today. <laughs> not, today. not today. <laughs> not today. But anyways, long story short, so I had a few jobs here and there, and my last job where I kind of started the magazine was I was working for a private school that I went to school at, and... Uh, was there for three years, revamped their entire marketing and got tired of it and was bored, looked up to the sky and was like, God, get me out of here. And I came up with the idea with an ag magazine and quit my job that day with $200 in my bank account. Really? So you decided to be a journalist. And well, is that, uh, I don't if know. If you start a magazine, are you a journalist? I, I don't, I, you must be. I don't know. I had or no Or are you a editor. podcast? Are you a host? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you on? The, you could start a podcast and have someone else host it. So, what if I buy a farm? Am I a farmer? No, you own. You're, an, you're a real estate investor. Okay. When do I? When do I get the title of? I'm a farmer. When you plant the seed. Oh, when you plant. The or seed. no, or take the IRS uh, version. If you're actively involved in farming, so you could like fifty fifty it, then you're a farmer. Materially participating in. You the could farming have it custom farmed, and you're a farmer. If you sell grain. So if you wrote an article or sell a product, you became an egg journalist. I guess so. Ding dong. I think you can be anything you want to be in 2024, it seems like. How do we get Don't one of think? these people walking by with white claws and <laughs> I saw a shiner bock, like, <laughs> bring us one. <laughs> we Time out. Thinking, yeah. yeah. We take an intermission here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a podcast. We can just edit this Where out. Where these guys get the hats that say ready? I'm ready for a... Oh, that must be the John Deere event. Vodka Red Bull or something Anyway, like that. okay. Back, I'm ready back. for a vodka okay. Red Bull. That, that sounds was, great. 
Yeah. Maybe Tito, we should take an in intermission Texas. and drink. Yeah. I'll have a drink, and yeah. then it'd make this go by even. We'll better. start this again tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Never come back. Uh huh. It's so like vacation. You got this magazine, mm-hmm. and it was it Ag Mag from the beginning. Yeah, I kind of just said, you know what, agricultural magazine, Ag Mag for short. Are you married at this time? I was not. So you had not I was yet engaged. married, but into yeah, okay. This so you already had the you had the vision. I mean, I don't know that I really had a vision. I never envisioned a wedding, but yeah, I guess that's where it was going. And I don't know. I just winged it. What did you say earlier? You raw dogged it. Raw, <laughs> that's raw, that's raw, what I was doing. Raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ag with Emma uh, gave us that term. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah uh huh. So I'm just trying to think. Like, how do you even know what the first step is to start a magazine? I didn't. That's it. Like, I just live my life winging everything that I do. Okay, so what was your first, so what did you do? So basically, I just Googled all these farm articles and printed them out. And I had previously worked with a graphic designer and said, hey, throw this together and make me a fake magazine. And he did. And then I just had my husband or fiance at the time drive me around to all these ag businesses. A fake magazine. And I I sold my vision. So you started selling ads? Yeah, pretty that's, much. Because that's probably what comes first is you have to fund it, right? Because it's not cheap to yeah, print correct. and distribute. Correct. So I basically used my connections to help me get started. And I had four people who bought ads, the first one. The so first how one what, what do they say? Like, like, hey, what's your what's your readership? Well, I don't have any yet. Basically, that's exactly what I did. I, I said, but I can promise me. you within a year, it'll take off. So how low were those ads that you sold? Like, were they below cost of production? I, Actually, I, I made money on my first really? one. Okay, I just always like think of this influencer space and media space and all that, and everyone like when they get offered their first hundred dollars, they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, we should do yeah. that for free." They gave me a hotel room, they and I drove halfway hotel. across the country. I didn't even have uh, Instagram or any kind of media when I started. So yeah. What year so is this that you? It would have been. I started, I guess, 2014. Okay, so you've been yeah. in for 10 years now. So yeah. does that make you, like, 22? Uh, I'm 37. <laughs> I'm not scared. No shame in my game. No shame in my game. I'm well-seasoned. There you go. <laughs> uh, that's amazing. Uh, I've never heard, I've never met someone that started their own magazine, so I'm just generally interested yeah. in that, you know. So what has changed, or you still have, like, the same, like, way of doing it? So I think that what made it super successful was that I found a niche. You know, there was, there was nothing like that where I live. In Mexico, as you say. (laughs) Dang near Mexico. Yeah, dang dang near near Mexico. Mexico. (laughs) And so really, there used to be, but there hadn't been for quite some time. And so there was that niche. And it just, by the second one, had picked up so much popularity. And that's not to say that it didn't come with hard work. I was on boards. I was, you know, agricultural boards. I was involving myself in all these things just to get my face out there. Right. And get people familiarized with me. So did you start out regionally? I started off, no, just local in my oh, little just local. area. Okay. And so what were you doing to distribute? Like, were you just going to the FSA office and getting all the farmers' addresses or what? No. Actually, I was just delivering them at local ag businesses. And okay. so it eventually grew to where I was delivering them at over 400 locations. So when you say you're delivering them, are you driving around? Like, yeah. Handing them out? So when did you make the transition? Like, all right, now we're big enough. I'm going to turn into an egg marketing company. <laughs> That recently just happened okay. about two years ago, but the show is what came next. So that came about year six of my magazine. I was just really bored all of a sudden. Uh, it started to kind of run itself. I wasn't have to going out and searching for ads and for writers. And so that's where the show happened. Okay. And it did not take off like the magazine whatsoever. So you started the show was it originally with acres or did you start it elsewhere i started it elsewhere so for those that don't know tell us about your show just a little bit okay so it's called ag on wheels and it's kind of umbrellaed under my ag magazine because the vision was in every ag mag which is my magazine i featured an either an ag business or a farmer or rancher so i wanted to put a visual to that and so i self-funded myself on that and went into sixty thousand dollars worth of debt oh yep been there yeah it, was, that. Uh-huh. yeah it was pretty it was not fun and so long story short during that time my mother passed away um of cirrhosis of the liver so i'm pretty sure you know how that yeah. happens yep. i'm an only child was raised by a single mom 
So there I was having to plan a funeral, do all that, oh, run my magazine, and then on top of that, I had the grand idea to start a show. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe well, to keep my mind busy, I don't know. You know, the busiest people get stuff done, right? So you bought a camera, you said, this is who I'm going to feature for the week? No, actually, I had a camera guy who I had previously worked with on a project. I said, hey, you want to join my team? Here's what I'm going to do. And he said, all right, let's go. So did you feature your husband first? I did not. I was like waiting for like he the big story. He just came on camera this year. Okay. He really? hated it. He hated it. Has he warmed up to it now? Ah, uh, he's getting there. He's getting there. He's getting, he's getting there. there. You know, it's kind of you got to, when you first date a girl, you know, you guys got to warm her up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Had to sell it to him. Had yeah. to bribe him. Okay. So what year was that that you started the show? The show would have started in... To about right before COVID. When was that? 19, 2019. 19? Yeah. Okay. And when did you become on or come on to Acres? That would have been last year. Last year. Yeah. So or where were past, you putting yeah. out your show beforehand? So on YouTube, and then it was airing on our local ABC channel every wow. Sunday at 5 a.m. But here's the kicker: Did you know that you have to pay networks to air your content? Oh yeah. I did not know that. Yep. Yeah, and so um, actually I wanted to get on RFD and I was going to have to pay $150,000 a year to air my show. That's excluding the cost of production. Yeah, not making it. Wow. Yeah. Now we've looked into, we've got a couple ideas for like shows, TV quality shows, and we've looked into the cost of producing and the camera crew. Holy cow, it's, uh, to it's produce really one show expensive. or one season is it's crazy. It's daunting. Yeah, it's really expensive. And so... I was like, forget this. So now I just will send clips to RFD and they'll air it during their market, you know, report whenever they need content. Did anybody help you? You know, we think we have ideas and, and that it would go somewhere, but you always like to bank that off of somebody without them stealing your idea. But, you know. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so if you if you put that out there, uh, did you have people help you? Like, oh, I think that's good. No, I don't think that's going to be a great idea. Nope, not really. I kind of crashed and burned a couple times. Okay. And so my vision for it was I wanted to travel the United States and film with farmers and ranchers and kind of bring awareness to people on where their food and clothes and all that good stuff comes from. And so I just started self-funding myself and using money from my magazine to implement into getting myself started, which... So you want to tell the rest of the world, but the rest of the world probably doesn't watch RFD TV. Yeah, no. Nope. Only only rural people watch <laughs> RFD. I wouldn't say TV. only rural. Well, like a lot. The name ag focus. Yeah, okay, ag focus. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, and you know when it was on my ABC channel, they were airing it on Sunday at 5 a.m. Yeah. Who's watching TV at 5 a.m. on a Sunday? A, a lot of farmers. A lot of farmers. Yeah. 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 So they already know what I'm talking about, and so that whole vision kind of just, like I said, crashed and burned multiple times. Okay. And then my husband was the one that suggested that I get onto social media, onto RFD and all that good stuff. Or not RFD, Instagram. So my you bad. started all this, but you didn't have social. No, I had Facebook, but that was it. Oh, yeah. yeah, so my Instagram really picked up, I want to say, 2019. Right. So is that why you call it egg on wheels because it crash and burns? <laughs> Is that like, or where, 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 remind me where the wheels Why is came it not from? ag on tracks? <laughs> I, I, yeah. <laughs> well, because I live basically in my car traveling, and ah, if not, I'm enough. on a plane, but planes have wheels too, you know? Yeah, yeah. They do. So, and I was trying to get it to where it was close to Ag Mag, but Ag Mag would not make sense for a TV show, would it? No. Ag Magazine. So, how do you really connect the two without having to rebrand yourself entirely? Mm hmm. Right. You can put a four in your. I don't name. know. You seem oh, pretty gosh. smart. Well, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're the marketers with a four, four. and we got to tell everyone, well, you can't have F O R. It's, it's the four. number four. It's, yeah. 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 It's like we're not very good at marketing. <laughs> yeah. I don't think I am either. Yeah. Like I said, I wing it. Yeah. So, how often do you put out a show? Uh, it really depends now on how many sponsors I have and how far I can afford to go. Okay. But I've gotten really creative because I think ever since COVID, people's attention span shortened. So, I shortened my show from 30 minutes to only about 8 to 12. How much raw footage? Ooh, how much raw footage do you cut that down? Your to? microphone got a little yeah, excited I got, I got, there. Got a little, <laughs> little whistle in my voice. <laughs> Is that the happy hour call? Yeah. Apparently. <laughs> we started the happy hour today. Yeah. That's your idea. <laughs> so uh, yeah, how, okay. So if you film a, you know, a 22-minute show is normally what a 30 minute segment would would take, right. right? With commercials. So how much raw footage does it take? Do you film on site for a day? 
Two yeah, days? it really only takes me about four hours. Really? Yeah, four or five hours max. Max. So, for example, I've done a lot of work for Syngenta, which will kind of lead into the marketing company part of it. Okay. But um, they'll send me to, let's say, North Carolina, and they'll pay for the production and whatnot, and we're done in four hours, three hours. And really? we knock out about a 10, 12-minute episode. So. Not a lot of editing, And that's, that's because we sit around and BS the whole time. Well, yeah. You know, we're not really filming. But, I mean, you kind of have to do that, right? Because you're like, that's something that's hard to go in and raw dog. Yeah. And you got to get no. warm up and, you know. You don't have my personality. Yeah. It's easy. <laughs> it's easy. It's not you. It's the guest. Normally, you got to get comfortable with, with people. No, I mean, no? I mean, I think I just talked to them before and they kind of forget. But it's not this huge production. I don't have 10 camera guys and all these lights. It's right, one. Right. He's just really good at what he does and it's efficient. So are you doing the editing or is that the producers and all that? Yeah, I pay someone for that. Yeah, I pay someone for I'm someone. way too, I'm ADHD. That would yeah. not fly with me. <laughs> It, it kills me to make one reel. You know, it's, yep. it's painful. Well, that's what we were at lunch today, and we needed to put some uh, content out. And we're all just sitting on our phone editing because, like, we had no other time to do that. And it's just like, we just look like idiots over here yeah. all on our phone. But, like, what other time do we have? Gosh, are you Gen Z or what? Just I guess. Face yeah, look, yeah, look at those, <laughs> the Farm for Profit guys over there. They're just idiots. They don't even talk to each other. No. <laughs> they just stare oh. at the screens. Waiting for the food. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Waiting for the Oh, man. What is that saying? Uh free food and beer and the farmers will come and hats yeah. and hats. Yeah. hats yeah i would yeah. i would go a long ways for a hat although i've getting gotten a little more picky since you got me onto richardson's oh yeah you know these are these are pretty nice but so what you're saying is you're bougie yeah yeah i i was wearing the old richardson 112 and i'm sitting in an airport and this guy looks over he's like rocking the richardson 112 he's like right on gives me a fist bump i'm like what is what did he say <laughs> and he's like it's 112 it's, it's the louis vuitton of hats and I'm like, yeah. I mean, of course, yeah. I, I have no idea what you're talking about. And he's like, right here, it's in it's in the band of your hat. It's a Richardson 112. So I start looking, and I talk to the next guy next to me, and he's got a hat on. I'm like, rocking the Richardson 112. He's like, right on. And I'm like, this is the thing. Like, this is this is the Louis Vuitton of hats. You know what's hilarious is that y'all will give us women so much crap for talking about shoes and clothes, which, granted, I don't do. I'm not a shopper. But here y'all are talking about hats. Yeah. The bougie hat. The bougie yeah. hat. Speaking of bougie, look at your shoes. You got like the big old star, <laughs> Texas star shoes, leopard print. Kind of some sweet kicks you got going there. Yeah, I really do love my sneakers and my boots. My friend is uh, the head of marketing for Anderson Bean Horsepower. Oh, yep. You ever heard of them? Yeah. Okay, their factory is down where I live, and I've done an episode. And she gives me boots all the time. I have over 32, 32 pair of boots to promote for them. You have wow. 32 pair of boots. That's a good sponsorship. That's a closet have. by itself. Yeah, yeah. look, there, there was a free shout-out for you guys. You got a walk-in <laughs> boot closet? <laughs> uh, you know, that's a great idea. If I build a house, maybe I should. There you go. Well, there's a line of uh, boot shining people down there. Oh, you man. Get your you know, I didn't bring my boots this time, surprisingly. It's just sneakers the whole time. Look how much walking we're going to do. That's true. And I got to stand out. I thought they were awesome. They Amazon. Are. Those are Amazon. Animal print pant out of control. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, not going that far. <laughs> so you're not going to go to the rodeo? I will go to the rodeo. In tennis shoes. And they're not tennis shoes; they're sneakers. Oh man, I was. I'd almost say they're like skater shoes. <gasps> <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> like skater shoes. I don't like know. Flat, skaters always have like the low, yeah, yeah, low yeah. converse style. I'm not into fashion, so sure, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm wearing tights I and I used to have some Vans. Come on. <laughs> do a kickflip. I do like, like Vans. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Those are, uh, I don't even know, what. just a star. I don't know what brand that is. So uh, you got me thinking. So she called it sneakers, shoes, etc. cetera. We were just talking about COVID. I was at a conference the other day, and they're like, the pandemic. Like, you had to say it professional. Like, what is it? Are we supposed to say, like... COVID-19 because it was 19, COVID, the disease, the <laughs> pandemic. The All like, I know now is we've said it enough and YouTube's going to flag it and yep. suppress views. <laughs> and suppress views. AI will be like, nope. Nope. <laughs> Not today. Sorry about your show. You've we, been silenced. Yeah. You're nope. canceled. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So how is your uh, social media presence now that you're uh, uh, joined the older crew here with me? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> since, since you're in there, like how how is that? Uh, you you went after the fact, and socials came yeah. after you already built the brand. Yeah, it did. Um, you know, 
again, I'm winging it. And I think I found a niche down where I live because we have so many varieties of vegetables and we're year round. We're planting and harvest year round. And so I think a lot of people who were tuning in were kind of just sharing the word that, hey, go check out this girl. She's over here showing all these vegetables we've never even heard of. Right. And the fact that we're year round, I think is pretty, pretty awesome in itself because when we're not doing vegetables, we're on to row crop, then we had sugar cane, we have watermelons of every kind, cantaloupes, honeydew. So let's talk about the, the farm for a little bit. Are, are you like direct to consumer or what are you doing with all this? So my husband grows, but he's not a big time farmer. His big thing is working for Helena right. and then he farms and ranches on the side and owns a spraying business for citrus. Okay. But um, there are large vegetable farmers down there and they are commercial. I mean, they go up to your Costco's, to your Walmart's, to our H-E-B here in Texas. Okay. What do y'all have up in your area? Piggy, Piggly Wiggly or what is it? I don't know. Casey's? What? Or Casey's. Dollar General? Is it Casey's a gas station? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the yeah. best. Yeah. Have y'all been to a Bucky's before? Yeah. No, it I mean, puts Casey's to shame. Yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry I, to all you Casey lovers. A lot of stuff lovers. does. I mean, Casey's got good pizza, but uh, what's the new one? Um, not come and go. Quick Star. Quick Star. Quick Star. Okay. Which is Quick Trip. In, it's oh, just is a different it star name. like my shoe? You see, I'm, yeah, like, I'm already go. promoting. But it's, a whole, it's a whole <laughs> grocery store. I mean, you can buy a dozen eggs, a T-bone. You can't, and that's their and, whole premise yeah. is for small communities that they're the grocery store as well. Yeah, oh. And it's not bad priced. Well, yeah. there you go, whatever works. But yeah, they'll sell to big and small. So it's not a small scale production down there. Okay. So what does uh, your husband have for a sprayer for citrus? Like a pull behind little thing? He has a four-wheeler and then these little attachments that uh, go out. Don't ask was, me technical terms. Well, man. I just didn't know, like, because have you guys seen the automation with that, uh, what is it, Gus? The Gus, yeah. Yeah, we, oh, we yes, were in California. Have. Global unmanned spraying systems. Yeah. Yeah, cool. he just started. He can't afford things like that. Uh, Look where I live. We can get some cheap stuff down there. Four-wheeler, okay. put a sprayer rig on the back, and you go and spray all those orchards. So you there married a farmer, but maybe small scale. Like, then you see, like, this sprayer right in front of us right yeah. here. Like, does that, wait, what? Does that resonate farming to you? Or oh, well, are yeah. you thinking like farming like small? It's all over no, the place. No, I mean, you. I'm down there where I'm down on my Instagram every day. You're talking, I'm on over 10,000 acres worth of vegetable ground. Very good. So, yes, this I see this every day. In fact, I can drive one of those. All jacked up, yeah. Yeah, in you fact, I drove a fifth the, the other day. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, I'm just saying, don't ask me like series numbers. That's, that's like a spaceship. You've been in a fan. You're like. I actually drove it at the Farm and Machinery Show with traffic. No instruction at all. They threw me in there and said, hey, come drive down there. Wow. Yeah. Did you film that for the show? I did. Are you the yeah. run, one that ran up to Tony Reed and like, let me drive? Oh, yeah, that was me. Was it? Yeah, you noticed my shoes. I was wearing the same ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, See, that was did. me. That's good for you, Dave. Yeah. You saw something on social media. Uh, yeah, wow. yeah, right? <laughs> it's hard for him to find things. You deserve a trophy. Uh, a trophy. Yeah. He doesn't get hashtags. I don't get hashtags. <laughs> well, or maybe it's Twitter. I have anchor. Ag- hashtags. I, don't, I don't like X because X just is so dumb. <laughs> hey, I don't have one either. I'm with you. It's so. You don't have a Twitter? No. And it's like Instagram threads. What's the point? Yeah. It's the same thing. I need to move to Instagram because I feel like the whole world is moving to Instagram. Like, it's already yeah. there. And that's not, the one not, I not suck moving. at the most. I feel like the whole world is there because I'm like, hey, what's your. They're like, my IG. You yeah. know, here's my IG. And I and suck at TikTok. Yeah. Well, as soon as Instagram got you? the reels, yeah, that's everyone was like, all right, I don't need TikTok anymore. You know, and reels didn't actually take off at first, but Facebook Meta, let's say Meta, Meta is actually pretty ingenious. They they come out with stuff, and people don't like it at first. Like the whole world was like, I don't like reels, and then all of a sudden, oh look at that! It's, yeah. And, and then bam, it's there. They're they're good at making things go longevity. Right. And all the people that were like, oh, you can't, you got that stupid short on TikTok. And then they're scrolling their Instagram and it's reels, the same and it's thing. like, yeah, it's literally posted from TikTok yep. there with the watermark and all that. So, all right, I got to be Tanner here and reel this back <laughs> oh, in. Reel it back right. in. Reel it back in. All right, in. Where, where are we at in the progression? We got to the farm her who? Uh, well, we got to the TV show, yeah, Egg uh-huh. on Wheels, and then you said the marketing company came next. Yeah. So with the marketing company, you know, when COVID happened and all that great stuff, I realized, and I was crashing and burning, and sixty thousand dollars worth of debt. My husband at the time now he was my husband looks at me and goes you have got to stop this like you are out of your mind (laughs) like any husband would tell his wife you know stop we're wasting money and i said no this is something that i know the good lord wants me to do and i'm bound and determined like i don't fail that is my problem is 
nothing is ever enough. Like I'm yeah. always striving for better. And so I ended up contacting an advertiser who is also a good friend of mine that owns a produce company. He's yeah. a produce broker. And he basically said, come on over. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to kind of alleviate that debt for you, but you're going to work for me two days a week doing marketing videos for me. And that's kind of where the farmer who kind of idea is y'all have farm her, although I never use that term. <laughs> so another yeah, pay deduction for Jessica. Oh, man. But um, so that's kind of where I started shortening my show, getting really into the social media and marketing company was deprived from that because then Syngenta's, John Deere's, a lot of stuff started coming to me and wanted me to do marketing videos for them. However, I didn't want to be a promotional account. So uh, I said, ha ha, let's just make this a marketing So you focus business. on making videos for the company? Yeah. Content and creator. So are you a content creator or an influencer? I hate the word influencer. So, oh, ding dong. So do we. I hate thing. that. You know what? I call myself an advocate. Advocate. Because okay. let me just say, like, down in my area, a lot of people don't realize Mexico controls our water flow. So for a lot of irrigated farmers with vegetables, you've got to have water. Really? Yeah. There's a treaty. It's the Water Treaty of 1944. And they won't release our water. And now our sugar mill just closed. We're having irrigation districts closed. And a lot of farmers aren't able to farm. Sugar mill, like sugar beets or sugar cane? Sugar cane. Sugar cane. And so I was actually up last week filming with our commissioner trying to advocate, you advocate. know, for our farmers yeah. because especially in our area, what are we going to do if we don't have vegetables or right. any row crop? I never thought that water would flow north. Right? Is it because Mexico South of you, well, right? Well, it or comes is it? out of the Rio Grande, which is oh, part of the Colorado gotcha, River. Gotcha, right? gotcha, okay. I'm very geographically challenged. You will make <laughs> me look like an idiot yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you start asking me these. But so the treaty basically says that Mexico owes us X amount of acreage feet of water per year. However, if there's a drought or a hurricane within that five years, it's a five year span, then the treaty starts over again. Huh. Oh. But now they're just redirecting the water flow from the river into Chihuahua, Mexico, where they have seven reservoirs, and they're keeping the water there oh. instead of releasing it. They're holding us. it hostage. Mm-hmm. So, Pretty much. So they want something. That's right. Huh. How far are you from the border? Seven miles. Seven miles. So it's not dang near Mexico. Dang near Mexico. Close. I mean, when I'm down on the farms, if, if you would use Instagram and you see. Right. You can see the river a lot of times where I'm at, and you can just see Mexico. I can throw a little rock. So are people just walking across the river and coming yeah. in? Yeah, really? you want to see a video? Just, I have one. You have? Oh, well, maybe afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hold that. Let's hold off on that one. <laughs> so the wall isn't built there, huh? It is, actually. The wall sits a mile off the river. On our side? Yeah. Really? Yes, sir. So do you own that land that the wall's on? I do not. No, okay. So the wall sits on a levee. And the land right there, uh, my husband checks crops for the farmer, farmers, I should say, along the wall. And it's river, farmland, wall, more farmland. Huh. And so how do they get over the wall? Or do they just walk around it? Well, now that Biden made it more so a fence than a wall, it's really easy for them really? just to crawl over. It's more so a fence. <laughs> this is the border fence. It's just chain link. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really, kind of. <laughs> Oh my gosh! So that is that a major problem in the area? You get getting a lot of it used immigrants. To, yeah, yeah. Really? I mean, it can be certain areas, but basically where we're at, it tends to be pretty common. If you're making area. produce, it's a whole labor-intensive type of agriculture too. So I'm guessing a lot of the folks want jobs. Yeah. Well, you bring up a good point. Yes, because the majority of all the vegetables are hitting harvested, yep. and yeah. I'm sure y'all learned that. Oh yeah. I mean, California does have a little more equipment harvesting, yep. but. In our area, it's primarily hand harvested. And now people don't want to work because they're getting more by not working, if you know what I mean. And right. so w labor is actually becoming an issue when it never was an issue. Yeah, it is. Um, we talked to John down in, uh, yeah. John the Farmer down in Yuma, John Arizona. Yeah. And he has a lot of H2A laborers, but they will actually live in Mexico and then cross the border yep. every day. And come over and work. He's got like two, over 200 employees. Yeah, you know, that's like what that. they used to do in our area too. They just come over for the day and then head on back home. So, 50 different vegetables or 50 different crops? Around 50 different varieties of vegetables. Mm -hmm. How do you keep it all straight? I don't. I just cover it. 
You just cover it. <laughs> I just media, do the media for it. But it is very difficult. I mean, my husband's phone is ringing nonstop. You know, he's having to develop spray reports, go check insects. And you can only imagine. I think ADD helps with that. Yeah, probably. Go this way, have a conversation, come yep. right back. And I I'm remember trying what to think, the I mean, I was he, talking about. He's got a full-time job at Helena, which is, a, you know, probably a, a lot of time like how do you find the time to do all this yeah well you see that's what makes him a little special is although he does sell fertilizer he also kind of appreciates his customers and wants to help them the best he can so he's a like their agronomist too so yeah. if he's selling to him he's their personal agronomist so he's out there every day at 7 a.m and he comes home whenever he gets done whenever right. that may be so you guys have kids i have one yeah I was boy, smart girl. and had one. <laughs> just one. Huh? <laughs> a boy. Yeah. Boy. How old is he? He had just turned eight. Okay. So before the boy, we found our good content oh, person God. found yeah. that you like dancing. Oh, I do not. What kind of dancing do you like? You cowboy <laughs> dancing? Are you a swing dancer? Are you like neon moons type Again, like cowboy it, slide or like what what no i do not like dancing i am not good at dancing so i make fun of myself oh okay. so on my social media i tend to to dance but it's not great <laughs> kind of like that right there there you there go, go Riggs. <laughs> just like that so have you done the uh, uh this ain't texas this ain't Hold'em, Beyonce song. No, like, no, not gonna participate in that one. Oh man, we're in Texas we'll and see everything. We'll here in a few hours. Dave likes to dance, and if you're within the vicinity, you don't have a choice. Maybe after you, you don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta you, dance. Yeah. If I'm drinking, the maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe. Well, yeah. if one of these people will drop us off a beer. <laughs> I mean, that'd be nice. But <laughs> you know, I just started hearing that song, but I feel like everyone is playing that. It's just gonna get. It's the oh. real. It's oh the, yes. yeah, it's the Instagram and once TikTok you're on the sound. once you're in the algorithm, you're you're there. Yeah. It's like you, all I've seen. I don't know, man. I was in the algorithm for a while, and then I just plateaued. Hmm. Yeah, and then I came back up. It's I don't know. It's a fun ride. It's like a roller coaster. Oh yeah. So what's the what's the main focus now, or is it all equal? No. So the main focus right now. What are you doing? He's over there. Oh, Brian. Hey, hey. Brian. <laughs> so the main focus for me is just to continue on traveling and, you know, accumulating more sponsors. And I'm grateful that Acres gives me another yep. outlet to air my show. And they're really good at helping me find sponsors, too, uh, because, like you said, it's super expensive. Right. Can you imagine paying for just you and one other person? You had to pay for their airfare, the flight, the hotel, all that. Good I can stuff. tell you this. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the you hotel, know. That our we hotel, got, and we here. have four separate rooms. But we're here, and we don't have to be here as long as we are. But you know, if you're traveling, you might as well might as enjoy well. the area. Ten thousand dollars. Yeah. For hotel. one trip. Stuff became very expensive. Look at this. Like we're, we're sitting around. Like I was taking a stab. A billion dollars worth of equipment in this room. Yeah. I mean, it, oh, probably. I mean, if that's a million and that's a million, then, I mean, it wouldn't take long to add up, but. And people will tell me all the time, they're like, well, why don't you just go back to doing the magazine? You know, why spend all this money on the media side of it? And I said, because I care so much about ag that I really, there's such a huge disconnect. And Did you just tell them print is dead and so I need to be <laughs> digital? <or something? laughs> no, I said that to my, to my person who prints my magazine yep. and he said, print will never die. I said, you have to say that. You own a print shop. Yeah. You have to. And he goes, you'd be surprised how many people still like having that tangible magazine in their hand. Right. It's just not the mass adoption. of Exactly. You know, I, I had some newspapers from the early 1900s that my <laughs> grandma saved. They literally reported on, you know, this family went over to this family's house on Sunday afternoon for a birthday. Yep. And, and a good time dinner. was had and by a, all. Yeah, a good time was yep. had by all. Like, it's literally their Facebook. Yeah. Yep. And that's why the grandmas of the world get on Facebook and just like Love it. They can't get off of it. Like This younger generation is probably like, what's a newspaper? Yeah. Oh, I don't even know what that is anymore. Right. It, it is changing demographic. Like as we have all the baby boomers are, are coming to fruition and, and aging right now, as they go and you get into the next gen and millennials, it that's when it could change. However, there is, uh, being a digital marketer myself, uh, there, there is an advantage to print. We do old school advertising and yeah. new school, and you got to do both. So whatever the archetype of customer is, but uh, who knows? M maybe nobody likes podcasts here in another hour. <laughs> All right. I got to be Tanner again. All right. I got to take on. the answers away from, from both of you. Oh, gosh. Oh, he wanted to play a new play game. game. He wanted play to play a, a new game. Oh gosh. So we like to okay. you like to uh, break up the shows a little bit and have a little fun. This is a new game he told is me. Is this the first time Tanner's never been on a podcast? No, we've done one. 
together. I, I think we have. But anyway, this is a new game, so I gotta so read. Mad. I'm gonna we, read the rules that he wrote. One person says three words that describe one thing. Each person around the table gets to ask one yes or no question, and after that, everyone has to guess what I'm describing. Oh boy. Okay. You so want me to read that again? Yeah, or three words and three then words, guess what you're then, describing. But you can ask me one yes or no answer. Okay. Each one, and then you guys have to guess. All right. All right. This was started in 5000 BC, has no sugar, can be swallowed. <laughs> a cough drop? <laughs> I don't know. You can ask a question. I'm going to ask a question. Oh. So 5000 BC, so it's super old. So whatever we're yep. talking about is super old. Yep. And it's no sugar. Thank you, Captain Obvious. And well and aware and of that one. For our be, listeners that weren't uh, Blonde, <laughs> not an yeah. idiot. Yep. <laughs> Maybe sometimes. And then we have... So uh, it's food, if you can eat it. Um, yeah, no sugar and can be swallowed. So yes, it could be considered food, but probably not. Do you have a question? Is it a medicine? No. Is it a plant? No. All right, now I have to guess. <laughs> I have no idea since it was... Dirt? No. <laughs> I'm 5,000 BC? Holy smokes. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Toothpaste. What? This is Tanner. I don't know. I, I don't make the rules. Right. Well, we just lost well, it's everybody. It's kind of like y'all called me a farm her. I, I right. disregard that one. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Go. This is a necessary evil. has a lifespan of 30 years, and it's dirty. Lifespan of 30 years? Yep. Dirty. And what was the first one? Is it a pet? Necessary evil. It is not a pet. What pet would have a 30-year lifespan? Yeah. Well, I wish dogs, dogs would have 30. A lizard? A lizard. <laughs> a fish? S -s Snake? I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's, any guess? He went with food last time, so it's a lifespan. Like milk? 30-year lifespan? No, no, and no that doesn't last a week. This isn't fair because y'all know how Tanner thinks. Yeah. I don't. I told him this game would be weird. <laughs> We've just lost our entire <laughs> listenership. If you're still listening, uh, leave know, us a review. The, the <laughs> editing's glorious. So, you know. All right. You have a yes or no question or do you want to guess? Oh, I got a yes or no yeah, question. Yeah, you asked the first question. Let me think here. Necessary evil has a lifespan of 30 years and it's dirty. Think of dirty things. Not, not. Okay, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this Censor. light. I just saw it come on in his head. Just ding. <laughs> so there I was. <laughs> There's a lot of places we could go with that one. Uh, maybe this uh, wasn't. Maybe this wasn't the show we should have played this, this on. Yeah. What, what, what's your yes or no question? Like I'm trying to I think of like yes or no. Like how dirty is it? I don't know. That's not uh, yes or no. All right. Well, let, right. Let, me, let me just tell you this, and we'll get on to the the, the next one because I just like the descriptions of the words. It, it's money. Oh. Yeah, very dirty. Probably the paper has That's, a... That's, but yeah, money yeah, goes yeah, way yeah. farther than 30 yeah. years. We need more yeah. than three clues on these. Yeah. No, 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 you I have agree. to... All right. all right, this one is uh, loud, wet, and heavy. A washing machine. Ah, uh, you looked at the paper. <laughs> oh, no, geez. I didn't. That's why I didn't ask that one first, <laughs> because I knew you were spying over there on it. So, okay, you win. <laughs> loud, <laughs> wet, and heavy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know about that game, Tanner. Yeah. It could be fun. Jeez. Might Someone else might need to come up with the stuff besides Tanner. Yeah, that crash and burn. <laughs> kind of like our podcast yeah. is today, oh, right? It's no, I'm kidding. Life partners, Tux, and Waddle. Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. I have one for you that okay. I made up in my head right now. Okay. Let's see how good you are. This is probably better. Okay. I can get real. Well, no, I shouldn't say I because I'm pretending on this thing. Okay. Uh Oh, now I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Dang it. I was like, can I okay. just guess Balzer? Balzer or Grain Card? Can get really dirty, mm -hmm. but looks better clean and loves the color green. Loves to get Lo dirty. Loves to get dirty. But looks better clean and loves the color green. John, John Deere. Oh. All right. Where see? we go? Tanner, take oh, lessons. Dang you see, yeah. Tanner should have had me there write this. Yeah, I made that up on the fly. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah, makes way more. especially in an agriculture. Like she was show. looking at the cloth booth, and I'm like, that's like not penguins. Really a Where do we come up with that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, 
I don't know what the what do you describe that green? Pea it, green? It's yeah. just junk. Puke. Oh, that yeah. yeah. Puke. I don't know. Like Claus definitely is not going to come for any sponsorships after you said uh, the color looks like puke. Uh, vomit, John Deere, yeah. please stay. <laughs> please <Yeah>. stay. <laughs> please stay here. We don't want to go red. Oh <laughs> my never. gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You know, Tanner might be mad that you didn't go over my farmer who. Farmer who? Yeah, the farm her who. I thought you said you don't, you're not a farm her. Well, I'm just saying, I don't use that term. It was actually called farmer who. Oh. It was a QR code that was put on to citrus or to any really commodity oh. produce. Are you trying to track where it came from? Country of origin labeling, if you will? Pretty much. Oh, so yeah. it was during COVID when people wanted to know where their food, people started to want to know more where their food came from. QR code, you'd put your cell phone up to it, and boom, a one-minute video would pop up with me and the farmer that grew that exact piece of produce that you were holding in your hand. So it's like blockchain, kind of. Yeah, kind of. Think if you had one, and I just scan it, and like, oh, here's your mom, here's your dad, here's the story <laughs> But about you know what? It you crashed and burned, because COVID happened, or that disease happened. The pandemic <laughs> happened, yes. Right then and there, and so it was almost impossible to market, so. Yeah. You think it could start back up? I think it could. Yeah, it definitely I think you could, could get wheels, but there's so much stuff. No like pun it intended now. underneath it. So. <laughs> oh look, great marketer. Oh, yeah. Are you for hire? Oh ding dong. Well, yeah. Can't pay you well, maybe in beer, but that's about it. What was the idea behind that? Why do you want to do that? So it actually was not my brainchild. It came from me and the produce company that I was working for. Ah. They were trying to implement a new marketing and it kinda all just worked on it together and that was the birth of Farm Who. <laughs> I mean, farmer. I think it's great in many ways because it's an advocate thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then it connects the people to their food, which is what they want. They're the consumer. You know, they feel that they want to know well, where the stuff comes from. Direct to consumer is everything right now. Right. Like it is. Yeah. Exploded. Yep. Yeah, it really has. And because it, people want to know where it came from. If they're eating a steak, they want to see the farm that the cows are out on. The calves are out on the. Yeah. You know, prairie and you're running around, looking good. You no, know, I filmed an episode doing that with uh, a family that has wagyu beef. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That stuff is good. But let me tell you what. You get really full. Do you really? remember yes. Do you remember laser discs? Yes. yes. So, here's where I'm going to go with this. It might just be bad timing. Laser discs like gave like 10 times the amount of storage that DVDs did. But the timing was bad, and then all of a sudden we had digital downloads and zip drives and other stuff that came right after that with thumbsticks. It was probably a really good idea. The timing was just really, really bad. Really off. You know? So I think you got a great idea. I, I think that if you had a QR that would tell everybody where it came from, it could explode. But maybe the pandemic wasn't the best time. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe someone's going to steal my idea, idea now, like you said earlier. Well, I've heard it before. I mean, yeah, we, we've yeah we've heard a lot of people on the podcast that we've interviewed want to do something of that nature. But um, I always bring up country of origin labeling. They used to have it on beef, and now they don't even have it. They took it away. The government did. It'd have, probably have to be federally mandated to make it happen or some kind of incentive like carbon credits or something. Or do you just do it as a value add? That's like what I mean. Your, your brand does it. Or you just, yeah, you just do it and ask for forgiveness later. I don't yeah. know. That's my method. Because <laughs> you're just looking for another way to set yourself apart. So you just need the platform. What what, what was the company where you can uh, direct to consumer uh, anything? Beef or cattle? or uh, Oh, uh, it was website. Yeah, yeah website. It was like, yeah, you could go there and you could buy half a beef or from a, a turkey. Or you get a, you get a label even. your own yeah. brand from oh. anywhere, Montana yeah. to Tennessee. I mean, I'm it was... I think of that. I, um, <laughs> anyways. We interview so many people. At, yes. Yeah, it's hard to... Oh yeah, it's this. But if you Gosh, just way to make us feel your you, guests feel you, special. You just need the platform. Oh, I'm not going to forget this one. Oh <laughs> man, <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad well. thing. <laughs> right, right. Uh huh. <laughs> no comment. Uh huh. <laughs> so what do you got to, uh, going on the rest of the show here? Just a lot of meetings. You know, yeah. it's a great time to network, get more advertisers. Are you filming a show here or anything? I'm going to be filming with Acres, not a show for Ag on Wheels, but um, for Acres, we're going to do farming trivia. We're going to walk around and ask people random farming questions. You already got one. What's green? What's dirty? And what's there you go. Green? You know, I'm really impressed with myself that, that I came good. up with that on the fly. I must say. That's why I'm not going to forget the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. So why does Tanner have this in bold? Is it in bold? Was once an orphan. Uh, <laughs> wow, that is in bold. It is. It's the only thing bold. Like was on the once paint. an orphan. I mean, did I, I don't know how. Oh, I, I remember him telling me. He's like, I want to make sure we ask something about that. Okay. Yeah. 
So I grew up, like I told y'all, my mom was a single parent, um, had revolving stepfathers, I guess you could say. Okay. All right, so several stepfathers. Mom wasn't lucky in love, only child. So when I was pregnant with my son is when my mom passed away. Okay. And so when she passed away, I didn't have any more living family. Oh. So technically, I, I guess I'm an orphan. I don't, the only family I really have is my husband's now. I do have one cousin, but I mean, it's distant, so. Everyone else is. See you at the pearly gates. Tanner, I don't know if that was worth the bold. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. no, a, I mean, that's a good story. I mean, to think your background growing up and how it shaped, I mean, it got you to where you are today. Yeah, right? absolutely. Like, I hate it when people say, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yeah. First of all, I know you're not really sorry. Yeah. Second of all, you know, I appreciate it, but I'm so thankful for everything that I've been through because without that, I don't think I would have one the personality I have and two be as successful as I am yeah. and I've met some really good people who've helped me become successful so it's not just a one man band for sure it's not what's that uh, I just got that Garth Brooks song through my head oh gosh uh, oh, like boy. mama was a looker lord how she shine <laughs> papa was a good but a jealous guy well, how do I uh, why <laughs> okay. we, we don't talk about Garth Brooks anymore. oh okay we, I guess He's, we don't talk I don't about know he doesn't identify as that anymore Chris oh, yeah. Gaines is yeah, that yeah, what he is I don't know what he is he now. went woke he went, right what? yeah oh man is like it true? Like he got kicked out of like of all this stuff. He didn't like people didn't even want him singing the national anthem for stuff. What? Yeah, did you see that? I did not see that. Or they wouldn't let him in. I, I know he remember. negotiated like the the gold copies of his his platinum records or whatever when they were out. Nobody had ever negotiated that before. Right. Trailblazers. And he's got beef with uh, who's he got beef with? Trisha. Like Joe Rogan or something. No, Trisha's white. I, well, <laughs> most people have a beef with their wife. Wait, Trisha. Oh, that's right. Trisha Yearwood, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh. See? I forgot about that. Yeah. Hmm. So what do we need to know? We're in Texas. Uh, rodeo tonight. Rodeo all week uh, here in Houston. So why has Houston got the biggest rodeo? Like, what's the deal with that? I don't know. You know, I just think that it's kind of in the center of Texas. It's just... I've been to the Fort Worth Stock Show one. Yeah, I love Fort Worth Stock Show. I've been Stock up to the National, you know, up in Colorado at the Stock Show up there. Does Is there something that makes Houston better? You're asking the wrong person because I'm not a fan of Houston. Oh, you're not? Okay. No, it's one of my least favorite cities oh. in Texas. In fact, I don't like cities, period, but right, right. in Texas, it's probably my least favorite. H-Town. Is I know, I'm going to get reprimanded for that. Sorry, guys. It's the most city folk town. Is that the proper way of saying it? City yeah. folk town? I mean, I'm telling you what, guys. We were in California two weeks ago. Yeah. And we did not have... We ate out every meal, pretty much, and did not have one oh, paper God. straw. Get here, go we to a burger in, joint, paper straw. We were in more agriculture country there. Yeah, but Tanner and I were in L.A. We didn't stop in L.A., but we stopped outside of L.A. to, to eat at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. No paper straw. I'm really surprised that you got a paper straw in Texas. However, we are in Houston, so I'm not that surprised. I mean, how unsatisfying <laughs> Again, is that feeling in your mouth? Ugh. And it just gets soggy? <laughs> Even talking about it, you know people that don't like styrofoam? You yeah, know, like the sound? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's what talking about paper straws. I just think about it just disintegrating in your mouth. Yeah, no, no <laughs> thanks. So no let's thanks. fast forward. I'll get us back on the, the, okay. the, the, the rail of the interview. What are you going to be when you grow up? You figured out uh, what the uh, what the no. end game is. Or what the what's the next thing? Yeah. Yeah. I you know I don't I never make plans for myself because they never go as planned. I am the clumsiest person, and I can tell you today in ten years I would want to be here. Trust me, I'm going to be yeah. fifty hundred miles the wrong direction. So I just live it up. You never know what day's your last, and mm-hmm. we'll see where it goes. How do you find your next show, your next company that you're going to work with, or does it all come to you now? No, it doesn't all come to me. I mean, I wish it did. Yeah, people will come to me and say, hey, you need to come film our operation. If I had the funds, I would love to do it. But I kind of just try to do a lot of specialty ag, things that I haven't done before, things that people aren't familiar doing. And so I'm supposed to go up to New York State, up up to New York State. Do you you just go film them or do you help them? Help them as in? Like run their their sprayer, run their combine. Dirty jobs. Are you you like Dirty Jobs, Michelle? Dirty Michelle. <laughs> Dirty <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> okay. What was that song by? What was it, Michael Jackson? Dirty Diana. Dirty, Dirty Diana, Diana, yeah. yeah. Diana. God, we're showing our age. We're so old. Uh, so I'm glad you asked that because it used to be like very interview style, but it was very lax. Yep. And then we'd do a lot of B-roll, which is footage without talking. Yep. 
this year I'm totally rebranding myself and I am going to do it like micro. So Michelle's going to be driving tractors. Michelle's going to be feeding cows. Yep. And yes, I'm talking third person. But I'm going to be doing all those things and I think it's going to be really interesting. So I'm going to go do maple syrup. So I'm going to be tapping wow. trees. Where are you in Wisconsin? Where are you going for that? Upstate New oh, York. Oh, that's where the, okay. Which I'm a little nervous to fly up to upstate New York, but we'll see. Why? Have you flown lately? Yeah. That's not the best. Have you? You obviously haven't been following me for a while, but no. I have the worst travel luck you have ever oh. experienced in your life. You probably fly American Airlines. I'm just taking a I guess. I fly them all. Because that one I have the worst luck with every okay. time. Lose my luggage every time. I, there's actually a really nice cowboy bar in Houston. The only reason I know that is because I had to stay the night here because American Airlines didn't let me get out of town. You know, American Airlines, one time I was flying to Memphis, working yep. on a job for Syngenta, a marketing job, and I got stuck in that airport at the Chili's for nine at hours. The Chili's. We closed it down, and by the end of the night, I had the entire restaurant and bar of Chili's doing karaoke. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. It, it was a great time. That was might, it scheduled that, karaoke, or were you like, find me a microphone, let's just... Um, I didn't really need a microphone, I just had, you know, we had I'm a I'm loud and I'm proud, <laughs> here we go, karaoke night. No Garth Brooks though. Thanks American Airlines. <laughs> so yeah, that was a rough trip, but so, I don't know. So are you rebranding the show, or is it still going to be Ag on Wheels? Well, it's going to be Ag on Wheels, unless you come up with a new Ag name. Ag on Wheels, down and dirty. <laughs> Ag on Wheels, down and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a great one, let there me tell we go. you what. That'd well, get it's a like lot dirty of jobs. They're like gonna put her in a track machine, and it's gonna have to rebrand. Oh. Egg on tracks. Egg <laughs> on tracks. Sometimes. Hey, I like that. Egg on track. We're on track. Stay on future. track with Ag. Yeah. There you go. Now, then, now you need a track sponsor. Oh yep. man. Sous- All right. Susie or Sousy, however you say it, <laughs> or <laughs> Cam Scamso or whatever. So. Whoever's listening, Good I need year, a sponsor. Or, yeah. Firestone. Just say them all. Firestone. So just say them all. Them all so no, no free ads. You know, we don't have a lot of tracks down where I live. Yeah. You'd be surprised. It's a lot. The soil doesn't need it, or why? No, because of the beds are... Uh, now, if you go more yeah. towards, like, the east and stuff, yeah, they use them. But on us, we're, we're planning on, like, 40-inch beds, 36-inch right. beds, so... I will say tracks are nice, but uh, to, they wear out on pavement or gravel or rock roads quite a bit, so it's very expensive to replace, and there's just extra bogey wheels and all that. A lot more maintenance, so... We don't have a ton of nice equipment down there, because, again, we're year-round, and we don't want our parts stolen. Ah, we were just at a farm yesterday in Alvin, Texas, yeah. <laughs> and we're just driving down this like private road, and there's just a dozer blade sitting there for a skid loader. A skid loader doesn't blade. And I'm like, "Where's the skid loader?" He's like, "Oh yeah, I got stolen, yeah, I got stolen. stolen last week." <laughs> He's like, "Nobody knows <laughs> about and, this road." And he just, yeah, he just said it like nonchalantly, like, "No big deal." Yeah, it just got stolen. Yeah, it just becomes part of it. You know those globes they had, like the GPS oh, globes yeah. Oh, yeah. on the John Deere's. Yep. Those were notorious for getting stolen. Yes. Down in my area. That was a big thing during COVID as well. Like, why, why would someone steal that, though, that knows nothing about farming? I just Because they can sell it on sell eBay them. for $7,000. People are stealing copper in, like, houses, the so, plumbing, so they can sell the... True. People are, people are hard up for money. That's why. Pawn shop. They want yep. something small and, and easy. quick that they can flip. And you would think it's a GPS. Like, as soon as they plug that in, they would go, oh, there nope, it is. There it is. And they can't for some reason. Like, how? How is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. But. People are crazy these days. Yep. So... Anyway, what what do, we, what do we miss? Otherwise, we probably Marvin should wrap this up. I don't know. Up. Yeah, I don't want Tanner to get mad at us. Do you need help like going around town to town to like showcase egg because we like showcase egg too. So, yeah, we yeah. you know we should really team up if we happen yep. to be somewhere and just we could knock it out. We could. We've got some things in the works. We can't say it on the podcast. Can't say yeah, it. We'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah, you made me tell all the things I have on the works on well, the podcast. Well, yeah, but you're in. Right? You're, you're uh, the yeah. interviewee. Though. We're yeah. the or. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> mm. It'll be out at some point. Maybe. Or maybe not. Maybe they won't accept maybe, it. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it won't. Yep. Maybe it will. Maybe yep. you'll crash and burn. Yep. So Tanner compiles this list. We ask like this deep question every quarter or so, and then we do a show. It's not that deep this time. This one, the answers have it's, been the same. It's yeah. always going to be the same. Yeah, it's always. But well, not really. Some people are different. Some people read, whatever. What's the best way that you learn? Like if you were going to go learn something new, what's the best way? Hands-on. I'm a hands-on learner. Like, yep. just get in. And if you fail, you fail. Yep. Yep. I'm the same way. You learn from failure? I do. Mm-hmm. My poor husband. He's a hallowed saint. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I fail a lot. So it takes a patient person, especially since I'm ADHD. Yep. So before we let you go, oh, no. tell everyone how, how they, they find, find you. you. Uh, primarily on Instagram, agmag, with a little, what would you call that, an underscore? Yeah. 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 So agmag underscore STX. 
which stands for South Texas. Oh. You didn't know that, did you? No. Mm. Uh, I was thinking of like a model of a tractor or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Huh? This is the SGX. Hey, look. There you go. Sponsor. There we go. Uh, and then my website, theagmag.org, or on Facebook, agmag. But if, if they want to get your magazine, how do they get that? Just go to my website, okay. and it's free. And you can subscribe? Yeah, you can subscribe. It's free. It's free. Yeah, that may sponsor Zill. Yeah. They'll just send it. Okay. No, I just, I send them out myself. I'm telling you, I do, I still do the majority Is of everything. Is there many going to Iowa? Like electronically? I do also no. have mail copies too. I can mail you a hard copy. Oh, you don't mail copies anymore? I do. You do? I did. I stopped for a while because during COVID they closed yeah. down paper mills. And so it used to actually charge me, I'd print 10,000 of them and I'd pay four grand for 10,000 copies of an 80 page magazine. Mm -hmm. Now... How much do you think I pay for just a thousand of them? Five grand. Eight. Wow, that's a big that's a big increase. Well, you need to make more. The more you make, the cheaper it should be. Yeah, but try asking for more money during inflation. You think companies really have that kind of marketing money? Hmm. And if they do, do you really think they want to Hefties? spend it on print? Is that <laughs> you said? Is that, that who said? No. Oh, who'd you say? I don't even remember what oh, I just said. I thought you said hefties. Mm -mm. Which it's is the Texas accent getting to acres you. Acres or whatever. Well, okay. All right. Well, you, Dave, you need to subscribe. Or mm -hmm. would you call it? Is that a subscription? It is could. It? Well, if it's free, it's. Yeah, you can subscribe yeah. for free. Electronically. And I got hard copies. Yeah. I even brought you one. Just for you. You did? Yeah. Well, I was going to say, Dave needs to. Because he's got yeah. a marketing company. There you go. Yeah. And then have I need to write an article in it. That's what I need. Yeah, there you, you do. Yeah, how do you do that? Yeah. Can, you, can anyone do that? Yeah, anyone can do that. As long as it's. I'm so lax with it. As long as it is ag based. Come on. Farm for Profit Podcast. We yeah. should pay. There you go. Just old chat GPT right in chat there. Chat GPT <laughs> right in there. That thing is a lifesaver now. Oh, isn't it? it though? Yeah. I used to write a lot of articles. Now I'm like, write me this article on this, this, and that. And it writes it. And I'll just go in and clean so it up. So what do you think better? Chat GPT? Or do you use any other ones? I had another one. I forget the name of it. But I use chat G team. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Google Bard. What is it? GPT? GPT. Yeah, yeah, that's a tongue twister. Mm -hmm. Open AI. Open AI. Why is it chat GPT and I it's openai.com? Open AI was the, like, like Denali or Dolly. Dolly is their picture portion of it. Chat is the more conversational portion of it. Yep. They're going to add different features to Open AI. I thought there was only one, just an app, and it just... You type it in. I didn't know there was different. Oh man, there's of it. there's Claude now, and there's uh, a Gemini with oh, yeah. uh, Google change from Bard to Gemini. So can I say, make me a reel, and it'll go into my photos and make me a reel? Uh, Ooh, you might enough. not like that. Soon enough, it will, but not yet. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go in the hidden folder, <laughs> yeah. we're okay. okay. How many no, have I'm just hidden kidding. Folder? <laughs> the hidden folder. <laughs> I'm kidding. That needs to be the name of your show. Just rebrand it, the hidden folder. Oh boy. <laughs> what is it? Hey, we're gonna go up here to upstate New York. We're going. Yeah. To I don't participate in that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Not on not in the public. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was using uh, OpenAI this morning. I took John Deere's press release, and I said, make me a, a news article. And Dave was prompting me, and we kept having to refine it and refine it. And then I had a one-minute clip to read that summarized their whole deal. I was like, and then John Deere came up and like, are you using AI for that? <laughs> yes. And I took a picture of it. So we were yes, either going to be like, like really good or fired. You know, I don't know. <laughs> kind of like Tanner probably used AI to make, or Jessica, yeah, whoever. Jessica, yeah. He might. We we uh, might. we have done some, but it's all about prompting. It's all about prompting correctly. Like it would it take five renditions. That's yeah. what y'all did. Y'all just went into Chat G and said, "Let's see me, what it says." Really give me quick. a bio oh on Michelle Mar. Okay, let's see. In the style of Tanner's farm In for profit. In the style of Tanner. Outline. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, you just got it on. You got the app or what? Oh yeah. Wow. Is that a pop socket on the back of that? Oh, Th thanks for watching. Did you say that? That was weird. Okay. Give me all the information you have on Michelle Martin AgMag STX. All right, let's see what it says. I'm oh. sorry, but I don't have access to specific information about individuals. You don't want to see that. Ooh. We are into her private let's, folder. Let's, let's <laughs> <laughs> we are into the private folder. Oh my gosh! What now? What are you doing? Write me a bio. Wait. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Why he's doing that? For a good Michelle friend Martin. told me to ask hey, you about hey. your spray tan. 
So normally I'm tan because I live so close to Mexico yeah. and the beach. By the way, I offshore fish a lot. Really? Yes. But uh, I'm super white. And so I tried last night in a hurry to apply self-tanner and it did not end <laughs> out so well. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Read it out. Oh, Michelle no. Martin is an esteemed agriculture journalist and editor <laughs> recognized for her impactful contributions to the field of agriculture media with a career spanning over two decades. Wow. Michelle has established herself as the leading voice in agriculture journalism dedicated to reporting on the evolving landscape of farming, agribusiness, and rural life. Her journey began with a degree in agriculture sciences. Is that right? No. So you got to prove Fail. this every once in a while, which laid the foundation for a deep understanding of complexities and challenges oh, facing the agriculture going. sector. Yeah, we got four more pages. Two decades. Here. Yeah. I had my business. A decade is ten years, right? Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say. What, what were you doing ten years before that? Oh. Yeah. Did oh, I, I had a previous life. I beyond guess. Beyond her professional achievements. Michelle is a passionate advocate for rural communities, working to highlight their needs and challenges in her reporting. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Huh. Huh. So, where did it get that information that's wrong? Uh, or does it just LinkedIn. try to fill stuff? LinkedIn. Could yeah. be a different Michelle. Maybe. There are different Michelles. Yeah. It's a very common Oh, name. wow. Here's a, here's a finale to it. Oh, no. Michelle Martin stands out as a beacon of journalistic <laughs> integrity and dedication, continu <laughs> continually striving to inform, educate, <laughs> and, oh, inspire, start. and inspire the agriculture community. A beacon. I'm you, a beacon of light in this dark world. Stands out as the beacon of journalistic <laughs> integrity. Man, it just uh, verbally slobbed. On your knob there, so. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> did. I mean, <laughs> made me really excited there. Wow. I don't know. Well, that's Who a great, knew? That's a great. Like I said, you never forget your first podcast. It's your first podcast yeah. of Commodity Classic. Uh -huh. Yeah, when are you going to start your podcast? Everybody's got a podcast. you got to have one. Yeah, you know, I like to do things differently. If everyone's doing the same thing, why? It's true. Yeah, don't copy us. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's not worth it, believe me. No. We're going to pay $100 a week and have $10,000 <laughs> in hotel rooms. <laughs> So yeah. It doesn't work. That's excluding airfare or drive time. Yeah, yes. I know. It's, so. it's terrible. Oh, now he's refining it. Oh, gosh. All right. We, we got to wrap this up. Okay. We're, over, we're over an hour. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you all, uh, guys. This, this was awesome. It was a great kickoff. And uh, I know we will probably be working with you in the future on stuff. Awesome. So, so that'd, be, that'd be pretty cool. So I look forward to it. I say, uh, you got anything to say? What? Say crack a cold one? If you're dirty. It's about happy hour time. But clean. But green. And Very you love clean. green. I still am impressed. I mean, y'all need to take lessons. That's all I got to say. You might be ag on wheels, down and dirty. Ag <sighs> on wheels, down and dirty. <laughs> on the farm. STX. <laughs> With a private folder. <laughs> all right. Hidden. Thank you. All right. See you guys. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>